Uh, so basically, uh, I met Owen Hyber, our other guitarist, in um, the spring of 2018. I'd heard a lot about him, but I'd never met him. He was a, a local prodigy and had a lot of local recognition for being a very good guitarist at a very young age. Um, and we ended up taking uh, guitar lessons at the same store, and so we met at a recital, and we agreed that it would be fun to play music together. And then in May of 2018, um, someone else was trying to set up a band and put me and Owen in like a group chat together, and we just took it from there. Uh, originally, we were called Operation Obliteration, which was thought up by the um, which was thought up by a member who didn't last very long. So we changed the name to Begravement uh, in November of 2018, and that is because I speak Norwegian, and uh, the Norwegian word for funeral is begravelse, which, like, if you break it down into its parts, it's literally just begravement. So it's the literal translation of the Norwegian word for funeral. I think that uh, that we are pretty unique for death metal bands that are coming out like in this in this era. Um, there's a lot of bands that are heavily influenced by hardcore, or a lot of bands that are worshiping Swedish death metal, uh, and we just. I mean, we have a little bit of Swedish death metal influence for sure. We have a little bit of Dutch and Finnish death metal influence as well. But, like, what got me into this style of music, and the same is true for the other members, is Florida death metal. Uh, and so we started out just trying to sound like death and Morbid Angel and a little bit of Deicide. Um, and we do throw in some interesting twists, we throw in some progressive elements, some unusual instrumentation, things like that. But uh, it's mostly just that we are going back to death metal's true roots. Uh, I think that is the main thing that sets us apart. I also do pride myself in um, my professionalism as a band leader, not to toot my own horn too much, but I try to be very engaged with the fans and to plan out each social media post really well, uh, and stuff like that, and keep our Bandcamp page updated and organized, and ship out merch orders on time, and I think our fans really appreciate that. So basically all our past releases uh, we recorded at home, and so this is very different because we recorded in a real studio. I have an internship at a studio in Minneapolis called 1459 Studios, and uh, I was fortunate enough to be able to record the entire album there myself without much supervision from the owner of the studio. He did come in to... Uh, track vocals because I couldn't be in the vocal booth and running the computer at the same time. Um, but because of my lack of experience with recording, it did take almost three months to record this album and then we went through a lot of mixing because I wanted to make sure it sounded just right. Um, and so, but it, it was great. We're very happy with the final product. The biggest difference is that it's a 100% a, real drums that you're hearing on this album instead of um, an electronic kit. It just sounds so much better and more real and more classic. So we don't tend to try to focus on only writing lyrics about a couple of themes. Generally, I just think that if something would be a good premise for a horror movie, they would it would be a good premise for begravement lyrics. Um, and so, you know, we have songs about mourning the death of someone you care about. We have songs uh, like 
our, our most popular song of all time, Destroying Angel, is sort of this like creepy stalkerish song, although no one seems to realize it is. Um, we have like dystopian lyrics, we have violent lyrics, but I generally don't lean super heavily into excessive violence or excessive gore because to me it always makes it seem like a joke when bands do that. And I actually have a joke band with my brother where we just have really over the top gory lyrics. So basically, uh, first and foremost, we came up with the album title, Horrific Illusions Beckon. The bassist, Matt, and I workshopped some ideas together and settled on that title. And then I wrote the song, A Horrific Illusion, uh, based on the title we already had chosen for the album. Uh, I wrote the song, it's about a guy who is going insane, and as a result of that, he isolates himself in his house because he believes that he will be attacked by demons if he tries to leave. Um, and so that was sort of the concept that we gave to the artist. Um, and he he took some artistic liberties with it, which is good. Uh, I don't like to be in 100% control of uh, artists who we hire, um, but it's loosely based on that song. Uh, the artist was Muhammad Anam. I found him online. He's from Indonesia. He's extremely talented. <laughs> So when our EP, Conjuring the Necromancer, came out uh, in January of 2021, Decibel Magazine actually hosted a stream of the album on their website. That was very, very awesome. That was one of the most amazing opportunities we had. Um, it helped expose us to so much of a wider audience than just our local metal scene. Um, in addition to that, we've opened for some very awesome bands, including DRI and Inhuman Condition. Terry Butler is the bassist for Inhuman Condition. He was also in Death, and he's currently in Obituary. Um, and he watched our set and congratulated our bassist on how well he was playing. So that was, that was very, very cool for us. <laughs> Okay, uh, I basically am just a fan of any music that I can tell has had a lot of effort put in by the musicians to be able to play the music itself. So, you know, I like technical death metal and I like power metal, but I also like some jazz and some bluegrass, and I also just like anything with a really strong melody, so I like some folk music and even some pop music. Um, in terms of a single artist outside of metal that has had the biggest impact on me, Rush, maybe? They're, they're like, skirting the line on if they're a metal band, but I don't think they really are. Um, but Rush is amazing, and they are, they're a big influence on at least three of the four members of Begravement. So I think the ultimate dream for us would be to tour internationally and especially to play festivals uh, in Europe over the summer. I know that the festivals are lined up in such a way that a band can tour all over the continent and uh, play most of the big ones. That would be our dream come true, I think. Um, I think that in terms of the way we sound, we've pretty much arrived at a comfortable place for us. Uh, we might mix things up a little bit more on the next release, which is sort of, we've progressively gotten weirder a little bit, just, uh, more experimental, if you will. Um, but our main thing we need to do is expand our audience and make some money so we can buy a tour bus or a van, and so we can do some touring uh, in the United States and Canada and maybe even Central America before we can get on a plane and fly to a different continent to do it. I am pretty sure that Minnesota has one of the best 
metal scenes in the U.S., if not in the world right now. We have a lot of very, very good bands. Some of them have got, uh, gotten more prominent. Some of them are still very underground, but um, some of the more well-known ones would be Nothingness, Void Rot, Inexorum, Obsequiae, Panopticon. They're not from here originally, but they're located here now. Crimson Thorn, Suffering Hour, um, and then there are some not quite as well-known bands that are also very amazing, and those include uh, Obsolete, Coffin Rites, Coagulate, Volsunga Saga, Visceral Reaction. Those are all those are all awesome bands that I don't think are super well-known outside of Minnesota yet, but they are super professional and really, really uh, special. Um, in terms of gigging, we have a fair share of good venues. It can be hard to get into some of the better ones unless you're a very experienced band, but that's okay. We have um, There's a very young audience that will come out and support the shows regardless of if it's in a coffee shop or it's in a, a, a 3,000 person venue. Yeah, so I would say the influence of hardcore on the death metal um, fandom in Minnesota, a lot of people who are into death metal in our area are more into the hardcore influenced variants of death metal. Um, and Maul, they're one of the biggest hardcore influenced death metal bands right now in the world, I think. Uh, they're actually from Fargo, North Dakota, which is about a three hour drive from here three or four hour drive. Um, and those bands are good. They're awesome. But it seems like a lot of the fans lack the deeper understanding of death metal to really understand what we are doing and where our influence comes from. And so some people have had a harder time getting into our music, uh, even though I think we're a lot more unique than many of the other bands in the area. Well, so I personally have always had a pretty small social circle. I don't like being around a lot of people a lot of the time. And so outside of work and hanging out with my family and my dog, I don't have that much to do except music. So I spend almost all of my free time listening to music or writing music or practicing guitar. Um, that the same cannot be said for every member of my band. Some of them barely ever practice, and they're still very good musicians, and they have much more active social lives. But for me personally, I simply have a lot of free time because I don't have uh, a ton of other stuff I need to do very often. So I don't know a lot. I am always open to uh, music recommendations of any genre or subgenre. Um, off the top of my head, Hemorrhage and Avulst were the only bands I could think of when I read these questions. Um, but I would love to discover more, so send me Spanish death metal at Begravement Ezra on Instagram. Our next step is really just expanding our audience, getting our music heard by more people, sending it to blogs, sending it to labels, and hoping that that'll open some doors for us and make it possible for us to uh, play shows around our own country as well as around the world eventually. Um, we have some new music in the works, but we're not really like sitting down and intentionally writing our next release yet. We sort of want to see if we get signed or whatever before we commit to more original music. But keep your eye on Begravement because we'll have something big happen in the next few months, no matter what that may be. I just want to say thank you all for watching and for supporting Juanma's awesome YouTube channel. Thank you for supporting true metal and underground metal. Cheers.
Estamos con toda la pereza. Suscríbete por aquí, que lo tienes ahí. Lo estoy dejando a huevo, más fácil imposible. Y aquí tienes más vídeos que sé yo que te van a interesar porque te interesa el metal extremo. Así que dale caña.